بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي الأحباب the rights that we have over one another are tremendous and unfortunately many of our brothers and sisters do not honor the rights of one another and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all of our shortcomings one of the things that I see I witness often is that unfortunately some of the brothers fail to give salams to one another and sometimes living in a Western society especially that you find some of your brothers and sisters perhaps because of sinfulness and perhaps for other reasons as if they won't acknowledge you at all as if assimilation has overcome their hearts and they want to fit in and they want to be like everyone else so you see many unfortunately may Allah forgive us in them our sisters who wear maybe scarves on their heads and jeans this is their concept of hijab which contradicts the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you'll find many of the brothers of course without beards and without any indication that they're Muslim, may Allah forgive us in them. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And along with that is we don't meet one another's rights. So when we see one another, when we require one another's assistance, we don't even give salams. So we should try our best to meet the rights of one another by at least spreading the salams. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال حق المسلم حق المسلم على المسلم خمس رد السلام وعيادة المريض واتباع الجنائز وإجابة الدعوة والتشميت العتس وتشميت العتس متفق عليه. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said in the hadith of Abu Hurairah he said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said the right of the Muslim over the Muslim is five and in another narration he said six alayhi salatu wasalam but in this narration he said five he said returning the salams you know so this is greeting one another وَعِيَادَةٌ marid, and visiting the sick from amongst uh, our brothers and sisters with tiba'a jana'is and following the funeral uh, prayer or procession. Wa ijabat dawa and if you are invited to a gathering to eat or what have you, that you should go to that invitation. Wa tashmit al atis. And that if your brother or sister uh, sneezes and they say alhamdulillah, then you should respond back to them. Yarhamakallah, may Allah have mercy upon you. So those are the five rights that are mentioned in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi We'll quickly go over them. The first one, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, "Radd salam, radd salam ayy al-ahbab," meaning to greet one another. If your brother says salam to you, say salam, and say that which is better, as Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions in the Quran. So if they say salam alaykum to you, say wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Try to Give an even better greeting. But do not, ayyul ahbab, neglect the, the salam and greeting one another. The second thing the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, he said, وَعِيَادَةٌ marid." He said, and visiting the sick from amongst, uh, amongst you. So especially if you have no hardship, you're not busy at work or something, do your best, take, your, take time, if you have the ability to do so, to visit your sick brother, or sick sister, uh, if if they're uh, in, if they're sick, in either in the hospital or at home, or what have you, visit the the sick, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will be pleased with you, and assist you. The third thing the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, as far as uh, the rights, the third right he mentioned. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was and following the janazah, the, the funeral procession. So at least at a minimal, pray, pray over your brother. That this is fard, 
al-kifaya, fard al-kifaya, that uh, as long as some group of the Muslims uh, perform the funeral prayer, then the sin is removed from the rest of the Muslims. So, ayul ahbab, if you hear of a funeral procession, or you're at the masjid, and they are going to pray over a brother or sister, or whoever, uh, from amongst the Muslims, then pray. Never neglect to miss that. Don't think that it's better to make sunnah prayers, as we see some people standing up and doing the sunnah during the janazah. But instead, they could have easily prayed the janazah, and then did their sunnah prayers. We see this in the haram. I've witnessed this countless times in the Prophet Wasallam's masjid, also in Mecca as well, that people, instead of getting the benefit of that, they busy themselves with other uh, things. Or they come in the masjid and it's time to pray, but there's enough time for them to pray the wajib, and instead uh, they miss the janazah in order to pray uh, maybe dhuhr or whatever they're going to pray. Now, of course, the wajib is wajib. It's an obligation. And then you have this sunnah, this uh, what is mustahab uh, of the janazah. But because the time is uh, for dhuhr, you have time. It's not that you only have uh, five minutes or something. The time for dhuhr is until, up until the time of asr. So you have, uh, so if you have plenty of time, especially because you're in the masjid, then it will be better for you to gain the blessing of both by praying the janazah and then praying your fard. And the next thing the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, وَإِجَابَةِ الدَّعْوَةِ that the Prophet ﷺ said is whenever you are invited to, uh, to a walima wedding party or a... Um, some sort of, uh, or, or an aqiqa, you know, where they're going to, they've prepared food because of the, uh, the birth of a child or, or what have you, then, or you've been invited just to your brother or sister's house for, for dinner or what have you, then do your best to go because that's a right that they have over you. That is a right that they have over you. Unless, of course, as the ulama make clear and is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, unless there is munkarat, unless there is sinfulness there. So if it's going to be a gathering and the men and the women are going to be mixed together and there's going to be, uh, you know, for that, that's impermissible in Islam. Or if you're, it's going to be a gathering and uh, there's going to be music, maybe there's drugs or whatever, anything sinful, sinfulness, then you should avoid it. You should avoid that gathering in that situation. Unless, of course, you are not only strong, but you're in a position to where you can make a positive impact in dawah, that meaning that you would be able to give them dawah, and you would be able to enjoin the good and forbid the evil, and the maslaha outweighs the mafsada, meaning that the, the good outweighs the harm. Of of uh, the good of the good in you giving dawah and being in that gathering outweighs the harm of you not being in that gathering. So in this situation, if it's a if it has some sin there, then this would be in accordance with the fiqh uh, that you, inshallah ta'ala, have been blessed with to be able to determine those situations. But in general, you should avoid sinful gatherings. The fifth haq or right that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned is uh, that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said that you should when a person sneezes and they say alhamdulillah you say yarhamakallah you say may Allah have mercy upon you and this is their right this is a right that you have so do your best not to miss that miss that opportunity and and to fail in that that deed, because those are things that help to complete your iman. They're a part of iman, and they're a part of the right that the Muslim has over you. Though your brothers and sisters, they have this right over you. So do your best to fulfill these rights, and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with al-nafiyah, wa rizqan tayyibah, wa amal al and may Allah bless us to 
uh, honor one another's rights. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.